Hi and welcome back to Interbase Labs. In this video we're going to be moving on from the previous video where we created a database and we're going to be adding a new table to the database and we'll also be introducing the concept of domains that really help us with creating and managing our database as we move forward. So we're going to use IB Console today to go ahead and create some tables into the database that we created in the previous video, creating a database. So let's go and connect to our test database and as we can see at the moment we have no tables in here. Now what we're going to do first is we're actually going to create a domain and the domain we're going to use then for specifying data on the table that we create. So we're going to create a suppliers table However, on the table we know we're going to have an ID field. So we're going to create a new domain for, and we're just going to call it D underscore ID. And we're going to give this an integer. And we can say this is not null. And we can just say that the, the default here is, uh, let's say, minus one. So we now have a domain for an ID and the ID field must be entered. Okay, we also we're going to have a supplier contact details. So let's have a new domain called D supplier name and we can give this a type of varchar and we can say this can be up to 50 characters long. We can also specify the character set that we want to use. So we could use ASCII, UTF-8, anything that's actually listed in here. We can say if this is allowed to be empty as well. And finally, let's add a domain for a telephone number. Now you don't need to have D underscore at the front of your domain names. I just like doing that out of habit so I know that that's a domain when I'm looking at it within my scripts for my creation of tables. Let's um, create this one as a uh, varchar as well. And this will be a varchar of up to 12 characters. And we'll create this as an ASCII only. and the telephone number may be null, so we'll leave that empty. So we now have three domains that we can work with. Now you don't need to use domains, as we'll see in a moment, but they do help when you're working with multiple tables to keep your data consolidated and having the same field sizes in different places. If you ever need to change it, then all you need to do is update the domain and then it reflects everywhere in your database. So if we needed to create uh, the phone number up to 13 characters because there's a new area code that came in then all we need to do is alter the domain and we'd be able to edit here the data type change it to 13 and then our domain has now updated everywhere it's used so let's go ahead and create the table so I've selected tables on the left hand side on the right here I'm just going to create a table and we we'll give this table name suppliers and let's add in a field so we're going to have our ID and we can now select a domain and choose the domain ID we can also add in a field for supplier name and let's add in fax number and this is going to be a D phone number and let's also add in a direct dial number and again this is a domain of phone number now we could if we had an ad hoc field choose and specify a data type that we wanted to use we could also have a computed field. So for example, if we had 
a first name and a last name, then we could have a computed field here that brought those two together to give us a field that referenced that data, rather than having to keep updated denormalized data. So I'm just going to keep that as a domain field for the moment though. Now we've created our four fields. We can also add a primary key in here. And if we choose the ID field and hit add current, then we've now got an ID in here, this primary key. And we could call this, for example, PK suppliers. We could add in unique constraints as well. So if it's not a primary key, but we want it to have a unique constraint, then we may say that the, we have a unique constraint against a specific field. We can also add in foreign keys, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. So we now have our table created. Let's go and create a new table, and we'll call this orders. And in here we can add a field, and let's First of all, let's have an order ID, and that can be a type ID. And let's add in a supplier. And again, we know the supplier ID is an ID field, so we can reference that domain. And let's add in a description. Now, I'm just going to use an ad hoc field here. So we could say this is a, a bar char, and this is up to 40 characters long for a description. And let's finally add in a, an amount. Now, we can add a new domain from here as well. We've got to this point where we're adding a field in and go, oh, I haven't added that domain yet. So not to worry, we can stay where we are, just choose new domain, and we can add in our new domain from here. So we can choose this as, um, let's choose this as a, a, a double precision field. And put a default of zero, say not null, and we can just put a check constraint in here, so we could say value between, uh, let's say, 0 and 200. And say OK. So we now have two tables. What we can do with the suppliers, if we right click here, we can alter the table because we haven't added in a foreign key yet. So let's just go and add in and we can call this here, let's call this foreign key. Uh, sorry, wrong table. Let's just go back and this is on the orders we want to do this. So let's alter the orders. Under the foreign keys, let's add in foreign key orders supplier and we can say this is on the supplier ID field and it references the table suppliers and it references the ID field and we can then set the restrictions about what to happen on updates and deletes so if there's an update then we cascade that through so we'll automatically update the IDs in the other tables and also, if there's a deletion, then we can set what happens. We can say, well, we can restrict that field, for, that uh, record from being deleted if there are orders in the database for it. Or we can say that there's no action, so we end up with um, records without a parent. We could set, we, um, set it to null, so we remove it out of the way. We could cascade the delete, and we could set it to a default value. So I'm just going to restrict it here for the moment and choose OK. Now that's all we've needed to do visually to set up our tables. And we can now go ahead and we can start, we can double click on the table, we can go to data, 
we could add in some values. So uh, let's come up with supplier IDs minus one. Let's just go to the suppliers. Let's uh, put in a value of 10 here. Supply name, Fred Smith. And uh, no fax number, but the DDN is 1234. And we can commit and refresh that. So we come to the orders now. Let's uh, put an order in. So this is order ID 1. The supplier ID is 10. And the description here is box of stuff. And that cost, let's uh, put in 210. Now, 210 is outside our check, con check constraints because it has to be between 0 and 200. So if we move that back down, we can now see that our check constraints are working with our values that have been put in. Equally, if we try to change our supplier ID to something that doesn't exist, you can see that it's actually failed and it's reverted back to our previous value. So that's been a quick introduction to being able to create a table and be able to set up constraints and domains. Now, before we go any further, I just want to show you how you can get to, if we go to view metadata, we can actually see the structure of the database as we just created it. So here we can see our SQL dialect is 3, which is the most up-to-date version. We can see that we have domains created. We can see the check constraints created. We can see the creation of the tables. We can see the creation of the supplier table and then the altering of that table to add the constraint in which has been nicely named. Now we're able to take this and we could actually run this as a script through ISQL to create a database on any machine. Or we could write this from hand if we wanted to um, get a little bit lower down rather than using the GUI to create our tables for us.